you were talking to the United Nations and you were talking about how competitive govern, governance and governments should compete for people. And this was back in 13. So you're still a big proponent of, of governments competing for the population. That's really Yeah, funny. and now they have now they have tools. Yeah. Now they have the blockchain and Bitcoin and smart contracts and artificial intelligence. And the ones who use them to the best of their advantage are gonna win. I mean, the ones who use them, no, for the best of their customer, their constituents, mm -hmm. they're gonna be victors. I don't think the control-based governments that are using them just to control their people are gonna win long-term. I think that's, that's a losing strategy. Well, for everyone out there, all the founders, operators, entrepreneurs, and venture capitalists who watch this, guys, I hope you're taking notes. If you're taking any notes, I would say that uh, if Tim Draper is betting on it when it comes to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, it might be a good bet for you as well. Tim Draper, thanks so much for joining the show. I appreciate it very much. This was a blessing and a life-giving conversation. See you again later. Terrific. Thanks so much for having me on the show. That was great. True startup story time. Guys, as a founder, I'm often asked, what are my go-to tools and technology that I use as a beginner startup? Well, that's easy. One of them is Dropbox. Dropbox is the easiest way to ensure that all your files and documents are synced on all devices, whether it be mobile, your local desktop, or remote. We want to thank Dropbox for supporting vchunting.com and make sure to get your 30-day trial free at dropbox.com business. Man, <laughs> man, I hit the stop recording way too soon, guys. Right after we had finished the interview, Tim Drape and I had stopped recording, Tim said that uh, I was more Valley Girl than CNBC uh, in my interview style. And uh, <laughs> I thought I was just, I was, re I was remiss, man. I was remiss. That would have been so worth clipping, having Tim Draper call me uh, a Valley Girl on video. Oh, man, what a great conversation. I will say, and I will just be 100% transparent with my audience because that authenticity matters to me. I was starstruck. Okay, I was starstruck in the beginning of this interview. And the reason is, is I've been following Tim Draper for years, decades. I have his books, I have his father's book. And it was just, I was, I was a little tongue-tied in the beginning, but I got over it real quick. But I just wanted to let you guys know that I was starstruck. Um, I know that Tim is uh, prolific. Uh, when it comes to sharing his knowledge with uh, content producers, whether they're nobodies like me or they're you know big big wigs over at CNBC, uh, but I just really appreciated him taking the time to share some of his thoughts and be able to answer some of these kind of wacky uh, wacky questions. You know, what I really liked I really liked his answer around the evil twin, right? According to Wikipedia, he's the most successful venture capitalist on the planet. Um, and uh, if he had an evil twin, what would he do? But he made a really interesting point, is that it seems like the evil, the, the, the bad guys, at least in the comic books, are the ones that are moving the needle forward, right? Dr. Octopus with his exoskeleton and using robotics to enhance himself. He talked about the lizard man, who's all about genetics. And, and using genetics to heal, you know, right? To heal, uh, heal the, the body. And, he makes a good point. It's an interesting, it's an interesting critique, these comic books, right? It's an interesting critique on the world by these comic book authors in that the, pro the progress, the technological progress that should be made in the real world is seen as, or at least embodied in, the bad guys in the comic books. Whereas the heroes, now that under this lens and context, thanks to Tim, now I have a new context in which to look at comic books, the heroes are the ones that are actually not doing anything. They're just reacting to the bad guys changing the planet or doing something or do, you know, using science to, to exploit some, some, you know, people group or using science to, to, to move the needle in some way, some tech, new technological advancement that could harm humanity, right? It's often the, the bad guys who are the innovators, the entrepreneurs, and the founders of new ideas and technological advancement. But it's the good guys who just sit and hang out in the, in, in, in the uh, what's it called, the danger room, uh, practicing fighting bad guys when they're actually not inventing a whole lot at all. 
It's a really intriguing, it's, it's a very thoughtful, a very thoughtful idea from Tim Draper. You know, I, I also enjoyed, you guys should also, by the way, check out um, uh, Jessie Draper. You can Google her. She used to have this show back in the day, obviously back from September two, 1st, 2009. She had an interesting show where she did something similar to this. It was a lot, you know, it was a lot more production value than obviously what you're seeing here, but she really had a lot of fun interviewing founders, entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, and individuals who move the needle in technology. She had a really fun way of communicating with them, even though she was the valley girl persona. And again, sometimes these, let's be honest, old white dudes uh, were a little bland, a little dry, a little stale, but man, she made it fun. She certainly made it fun. And I, and I, I would go as far as to say, being a content producer myself, if she stuck with it, she'd be a rock star today. 10 years later, she's stuck with it. I mean, it's that grind, I know, but I'm sure she's doing quite well as a venture capitalist, just like her father, and just like her father's father, and just like her father's father's father. Guys, one thing that was interesting, though, when I, I asked him the question from September 7, 2013, about Theranos launching, um, awesome, just what medicine needs, uh, he didn't really give us an answer about what we learned. And, 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 and it's probably because his reputation and his brand is more valuable than mine. And so dodging that question probably was a good idea. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that he dodged the question. I think he went into this whole idea of whenever, a lar whenever someone tries to upset the incumbent, right? Whenever someone has a world changing idea like Facebook against the media, or Uber against taxis and, 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 and transportation, right? They're going to have to fight. I think what Elizabeth did um, with Theranos, she had to fight, but she fought the wrong fight. She fought the wrong fight. And I think what, what it, 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 not that I know all the insides and outsides of what happened with Theranos, but I've read the book and I've watched the videos and the, watched the documentaries. I think so what happened is that in many ways, there's just a lot of hubris. There's a lot of hubris in the venture capital world. And I think that needs to be not, not squash, but it needs to be tempered. It need to, needs to be tempered. So what did we learn from Theranos? Don't trust the guy or a gal in a turtleneck? <laughs> I don't know if that's, that's the right answer. Obviously, uh, Tim Draper is a big proponent of Bitcoin and blockchain. When I used to have my old cryptocurrency company and my old venture funded company in the cryptocurrency world, I spent a lot of time um, doing news articles like this and reporting on what Tim Draper is doing in the cryptocurrency world. He's one of those guys that is obviously seen something that you and I might not have seen. He sees the diamond in the rough. He sees the opportunity where you and I might not see the opportunity. Hashtag Bitcoin in space. Not just Bitcoin up there, but Bitcoin all around. Ephemeral is, the, I think, the word that he used here. And I can completely resonate. I understand that idea. Bitcoin and blockchain has unlocked something powerful. It's unlocked the ability of self-sovereignty, the ability for people to transact however they please. Now, it's not 100% mature yet. It's not at a usable, uh, usable level at scale. Uh, however, just like Tim said, work is being done in the Bitcoin and blockchain space in major ways. And so he said, 2022 to 2023, Bitcoin to 250K. Well, he's not gonna bust a John McAfee and eating his bow, 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 bow for a million, uh, a million dollars per Bitcoin. But as you saw, he did eat a hat. So clearly he's willing to play the game and willing to eat things if he's wrong. Finally, I just want to say I really appreciate it. I wrote this down. Fail, fail again until I succeed. I think that's a powerful, encouraging line. Fail, fail. I'm willing. Be willing to fail until you succeed. Be willing to go through it, to work hard for it, to do it. I think Tim Draper is a perfect example of someone who has succeeded in many ways, but has also failed, but never given up. Thanks so much for this opportunity, guys, to host Tim Draper on this show. I hope I'm, I'm loving doing this. I hope you guys are having a lot of fun, too. And if you want to find more information on this interview and obviously all the things about Tim Draper, you can find your way over to vchunting.com slash Tim Draper. Guys, this is cool. See you in the next one.